Welcome back to Trinity Lutheran Church of Mountain Lake, Minnesota. Uh, we're here with Pastor Peter Kufal and myself, Terry Karshnik, and we're going over Luther's small catechism. And we've been going through some pretty intense stuff. Yeah, we've been looking at the sacrament of the altar, the Lord's Supper, the gifts that he brings to us in his body and blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. We've looked at the four questions that Luther basically asks in the small catechism over the past four segments. But we want to take a little bit of time in this segment just to kind of look at some of the things that we deal with, that we see, and something that might be helpful to you in, in understanding a little bit more of our, at least our practice here when it comes to the Lord's Supper. Yeah. Now, as, as pastor here, I, I, I do try and do my best. I know I'm not perfect at it, but I do try and do my best to get to know each of our members and where they're at and what's going on in their lives. I hope my members are as honest with me as possible. I know you do a very good job of that. So. Well, as, as, I, as I encourage people, I say, I'm not going to nail you to the wall for what right. it is that you've done. We're going to have a talk about it, but that doesn't mean that I don't love you and care for you, and I'm here to help. And you, know? you do. And so I want members to be honest with me with their sins, mm -hmm. no matter how ugly it is. There are some that are pretty out there. Yeah. So. But I pray that I always look at people through the eyes of Jesus. That he has died for this person and cares for this person. And so I want to do what's best for them. So we're going to walk through these things together. Mm -hmm. you know, so I want people to be open and honest with me. And so that's why, you know, when we, we sometimes get to people who don't want to acknowledge that they're wrong and they're actions, I say may, now may not be the best time for you to come to the Lord's Supper. Just sit back. Or if you still want to come up because everybody else is coming up, just come up with your hands yes. folded and I'll give you a blessing, asking that God works upon your heart to bring you to that place where you say, okay, I want to leave this sin behind. Mm -hmm. you know? And so I encourage, I encourage our members who are struggling with that, you know, come, for, come up for that blessing. Now, for example, if, if, there, if I, I, have, I have an out, um, one of the members is struggling with an addiction such as being an alcoholic, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, a, that's an addiction, as, as many, right. you know, but they know that they, they're struggling with it and they may relapse or whatever. Mm -hmm. Is that where, well, then they shouldn't come to communion? No, they need to come and receive Christ's body and blood. It's... It should be good for them. I have to give for that forgiveness. That's what it's all about. Right. Now, sadly, one of the things that happens is that we create barriers at times. And as that, the blood is the, the host for that blood is, is wine. That's what Jesus used mm -hmm. on the Last Supper. It wasn't grape juice. It wasn't things along those lines. It was wine. Jesus turned water into wine. Right. Wine is not a bad thing. It's the abuse of it that it gets out of hand. Right. And, and so confessional church bodies are going to use wine, not grape juice. And so, for example, for the alcoholic, they may say, that, that's a barrier for me. I'm afraid that I might relapse. And so what we do here at Trinity is that we, we have some individual cups mm -hmm. that are set aside, which are greatly diluted. Right. You know? And so it's... It's still the wine is there. It's just diluted with water. Broken down, yeah. And so, and so we don't want any type of barrier to be there for right. the individual. And that's kind of what has happened. Because if you might remember in the early 1980s when there was the big AIDS scare and the germ scare, yeah. churches went away from a common cup right. to more individual cup because we were afraid of the germs. Well, it is an issue. I mean, it can be an issue. There, there are more people that deal with it a little differently than others. But, uh, you know, you want to give them what they, can, what they need. Well, I've never heard of people getting sick from going to communion. Well, there's always that what if. Well, we, and that's something we create for ourselves. I, I, yes, that, that's exactly you know? right. This isn't about the, this. Right. It, you're right. Because there's also something that says that if I take of the one cup, mm -hmm with my neighbor drinking out of the same cup, we're of the same belief, same faith, and I'm okay with this person. Mm -hmm. You know, one body, one Lord, one cup. 
As I recall growing up, that's how it always was, was also. Well, once again, that's what we're taught in Scripture. Yeah. You know, and I'll never forget that, you know, as I was a kid growing up in a large church, you know, my dad was an usher and we sit in the back and throughout the service, homeless members of our congregation would come and they didn't smell very good. Right. They didn't dress very nice. Right. They weren't very well kept. But my father would be behind them in the communion line and he would take the, that common cup from them at the same time. I said, Dad, those people, they, you know, I, I'd have a hard time with that, Dad. He says, but they're my brother and sister in Christ. I love that. I think that's wonderful. It's, it's, a, it's a great thing. You know, uh, I, how you felt, though, is, is very common. Well, exactly. And we need to put that aside. Okay. Once again, these are our brothers and sisters in Christ. And if they truly are, we need to set aside our ewes, mm. if it, for a lack of a better term. Well, it's, I rem- like you were talking about in the 80s, I remember when that came up for an issue in, in our church. And uh, it was voted on to do that, that small cup. If you, mm-hmm. But it was oh, just recently, though, that we bound back to the to the cup. Yeah, and what's really interesting is to see that our youth are ones who really enjoy, and I shouldn't say enjoy necessarily, but have pulled themselves to using that common cup more than an individual cup. I'm seeing it happen more and more again also with Mm -hmm. with others. Mm -hmm. And and myself, I'm changing back. And so it's interesting to to talk about that. Yeah. But once again, it's a part of that that unification. Mm -hmm. And so... Now, and now we live in a world too where, you know, we're, we're quite mobile. Oh yeah. You know, we, we visit family and friends who are in different cities and different churches. Yeah. And well, when it comes Sunday, we, we want to go back. We, we should feel that pull to hear God's word, that pull to receive yeah. God's word. Right. You know, and so we should go to church even when we're on vacation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a part of that response to the commandments. You know, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy is that call to be in church, the call to be with God's word. I just think of that. I was in Jamaica here a year or two back, and uh, we kind of thought maybe we should go to church. And I didn't realize church over there is like a half a day. <laughs> it's like I was thinking an hour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that yeah. was that was very interesting. Yeah, oh, sure. And they are very very religious, very festive. Yes. Oh, very interesting. Mm-hmm. So, so, but you know, it, it, once again, it's important that we do some of one of our homework into recognizing it. And exactly. the first step of that is, you know, f- looking at the the church body that, that church belongs to. Right. You know, if you're if you're if that church is, for example, is we are a member of the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod. Yeah. If that church is a member of the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod, you know that they should be teaching and preaching the same thing that we do back home that you were brought up learning that you were instructed in. There were so many people there that it was really not even able to find out. Well, in Jamaica, I'm not <laughs> sure if we have any Missouri Synod I, churches I, there. I would doubt it, but it, would, you know, it was something that I should have tried yeah. to look into, but uh, there was, it was amazingly packed. Well, exactly. The churches were packed. But in, in those cases, it's always good, especially if they're going to be having communion at that service, and if you want to receive the com- Lord's Supper, as Jesus says, mm-hmm. do this in remembrance of me, it's always good to talk to the pastor prior to the service. Right. You know, come 10 minutes early. Make sure you get there a little bit early and talk to the pastor. Introduce yourself. Say, I'm, tell him where you're a member of and, and say, I would like to receive the Lord's Supper. Is, is it okay with you? I'm, I, I know I'm a sinner. I need the forgiveness, and I know I need Jesus. I will, okay. You know, and, and trust me, as a pastor, we'd love to hear that. Sadly, we don't usually get that very often. It's very seldom, but, yeah. but it has happened. It's seldom. Yep. You know, and, and so that's important. Get, talk to the pastor. And if you go to a church where that it's not of the same denomination as the one you've grown up in, mm-hmm. It's okay not to take the Lord's Supper okay. at that time. Just Don't feel pressured. Don't let anybody pressure you into it. If somebody pressures you into taking the Lord's Supper, that's not a right either. You know. That that's not good. No, that's not that's not good either. No. Um, in in that type of a situation. Right. Now, granted, as your personal pastor, I may pressure you into taking the Lord's Supper to say, okay, you need this because Jesus says do it. Right. But don't let some somebody from a different denomination where okay. you're not sure what's okay. going I, on. I see your point. Pressure you into it. That's that's good. That's good to hear. 
and so, people should know that. That's good. Yeah. Now here at Trinity, you know, we have guests all the time, and all we're thankful. We love having guests and visitors here, and sometimes they come up to the Lord's Supper as well, mm-hmm. you know, without talking to me. And sometimes I know their background, and it's like, hmm. Now, the hardest part of that is I don't know how God's word has worked on their heart through the service. I I, I just don't know. Yeah, yeah. They, they they could have had a come to meeting Jesus, come to meeting with Jesus in that time and understanding and recognize I need forgiveness of sins. Will, I need to leave this willing to let it go. Yeah, I, I, I and I trust Christ completely. Mm-hmm. Now, in, in, because of their own urgency, they may come to the Lord's Supper. At that first time, I'm not going to deny them the Lord's Supper at the altar. Mm-hmm. But I do want to try and do my best, and I, and I have to admit, I'm not always the best at it. But I try and do my best to get to meet with that individual after the service, talk to them a little bit, yeah. you know, and, and get to know where they're at, why they came up. Not grilling them, no, no, it's, but it's, it's, just once again out of that, that concern for who they are as an individual and not wanting to see them you know, bring bad judgment upon themselves. No. Makes so, sense. Yeah. So, I, so, I, I, so that's where I'm at on it. And so, unless in extreme situations where somebody is blatantly disregarding what I have pleaded with them to mm-hmm. do, mm-hmm. will I refuse somebody the Lord's Supper at the railing? It's tough. Yeah. And, and I can only remember once having to do that. I can't even imagine how you how do you handle it. Yeah, and it's but, something I, that, that's that's not it's not fun. I am. No, but, but it's tough. But the Lord's Supper is an amazing gift that God brings, and it reunites us to Jesus Christ. It keeps us fed. It keeps us nourished, and it keeps us growing, and it does amazing things in our life. It's something that we need. Yeah. And so, friends, I thank you for watching these segments. You know, I, we, we just really touched the surface on it. Read, it. read about it. Get the book and read about it. It's very, very interesting. Yeah. Spend time with, in your Bible. Spend time in your catechism. Spend time actually sitting down and talking with your pastor about right. it. And spend some time in that meditation and that prayer and that reflection upon your life and where you're at. And pray with your God that he works that repentant heart within you. It's amazing what he does. So thank you for tuning in. Thanks, Greg, for making your studio on the go today. (laughs) And so on. Once once again, thank you for being a part of our, our church. God bless.